welcome everybody to the master, Clear Tai Chi Mastermind meeting today uh, when we're filming this is Friday, November the 6th, uh, 2020, the year that wasn't with coronavirus increase, rapidly increasing and the populace getting um, crazy and at each other's throats about their guy won and don't count this and do count that and count all that and whatever other craziness that's going on. In the meantime, we're doing Tai Chi. The, uh, all right, so today's topic is going to be or is assimilating principles into practice. And I had it as a suggestion originally from Daniel Stringer and Sheila Bell. And you guys were coming at it from two slightly different places, but, but it kind of merged. And so I put it together and we'll be doing this this week and probably at least some of next. Um, maybe one more, depending on what we get into. But before we do all of that, two, two items of business. The first one is... Uh, this bes beside me here is Jeremy Keeble. He is now on and, and helpful for you, and he will be serving a very similar function um, as to what Matt Holker currently shares. Matt is at a different location today. He'll be back with me at this location, God willing, next week. The uh, uh, and so um, Jeremy, say hello to everybody. Hey, nice to see you guys. Some of you I know, and maybe a couple that I don't. But uh, it's good to be on, guys. And then um, Matt is the regional organizer for Maryville, Tennessee. Uh, and we're right outside. Of, we're like a, a 20 minutes, 25 minutes from Knoxville. We're five minutes from the Knoxville airport. Knoxville is um, 20 minutes from the Knoxville airport. Anyways, go ahead, Matt. Yep. Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, happy to be on the call and hopefully, uh, you know, um, We'll be joining them uh, back in the in the studio there uh, next week. And Chris Walsh up in Maine. Is Chris frozen? He looks like oh no, he's there. Frozen. No, I saw his eyes move. Nope, frozen. <laughs> yeah, he's frozen. Okay, we'll come back. Uh, I'll keep an eye up there because he'll probably have to check back in. All right, Greg uh, Nolmeyer in uh, Arbor, Ypsilanti, Michigan. Welcome, welcome. Hey guys. Uh, Art Don in the Washington DC area. Everyone, uh, Art Don, Greenbelt, Maryland, about 12 miles east of Washington DC. Welcome. Sheila Bell in Costa Rica. Hi everybody, um, coming to you today from Playa del Coco in Guanacaste. And I also give classes in Laveria and Playa Panama. Good to be here. Welcome. Thank you. Leg in Verona, New Jersey, outside of New York City. Hello there, Sifu. Oh, Thank you. Was New York City before coronavirus hit. We were the hot spot. We got our act together. Not anymore. <laughs> and Phil Chan, welcome. And Phil Chan in Columbus, Columbus Georgia. Georgia. Hello, all. Hello, hello. Welcome. And Ty Talbert in Colton and some other places he'll tell you about in California. Hello, all. I teach in Colton, California, Riverside, and Redlands, California. Welcome. Chris Walsh in Maine. Hello, everyone. I'm in uh, Hollowell, Maine, just outside of Augusta. And Jim Kelly in Boca Raton, Florida. Yep. Preparing for yet another hurricane. We've been all through the alphabet twice, and we're on to the, the Greek alphabet now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll be praying for you. <clears throat> Daniel Stringer, slightly north of him in Florida, and I'll let him tell you what parts. Uh, we're in Paisley, outside of Deland, uh, not too far from Orlando. And hello. Welcome, Joan. Both of you. And all right, so then, so assimilating principles. Uh, before we begin uh, with the rest of that, a note from our sponsor, Clear Tai Chi. And it's the promotion that I've got for you today, because it's, it's going to tie into what we're talking about quite a bit, is clear 24-7 Qigong. The, uh, and where would they go to find that, Matt? That's a good question. I, I mean, I know they can get it on clearmartialarts.com. Um, I know it is available as a course on clearmartialarts.com, and so I would say check it out there. I want to I think we we actually have a more direct route to it, but I don't remember off the top of my head what it is. But um, I will take a look. 
um, and see if I can't come up with that for later in the episode. But for now, um, clearmartialarts.com, I know they'll be able to find it. He's got one in his hand there. <laughs> so the 24-7 Qigong, which is how to practice, how to do it so that you integrate your practice throughout your day as you're doing other things in your day. Yep. And and all of that. The other thing we'll be getting into a little bit will be the uh, things that tie into the Tai Chi roadmap. And that's at. That, that is at Tai Chi roadmap.com. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And so please check those out. And especially if you're interested in what we're talking in today, or want to get more in depth with that. Those would be the two things that I would go to. Um, and we're going to be, like I said, hitting a lot more that has to do with the 24 seven Qigong, but then you will hear some things that tie into the Tai Chi roadmap as well. All right. So one of the questions um, that we get asked a bit and that people will ask online and that, and that people are interested in is how often do you practice? And so, um, and so there's different things meant by that question, including how often do you do your form? Cause you're not walking around doing your form while you're doing everything all day. Right. But that kind of a thing. And so how much dedicated time and for me, that's somewhere between a half an hour and three to four hours a day. And it depends on the day. <clears throat> and then if I'm not doing that, it's usually either because I'm teaching a workshop, which means I'm doing a lot more of the 24 seven Qigong or I'm out hiking in the mountains. And so I'm getting my exercise that day on that. And I might stop and do a Tai Chi set somewhere with the bears or, you know, depending anyways. Um, but for you guys, I'm sure most of you have your own answer to, how often do you practice and that kind of a thing? And depending on how you're normally getting the question. And so I want to give you some time to weigh in on that. And so we'll start with Greg, who's up in the far corner there and on my, on my screen. Um, I would say similarly, but then I'd say, you know, definitely a half hour, probably not four hours. And because I'm not teaching that long at this point, but definitely a half no, hour personal practice. Of my own practice. Okay. Uh, it depends on how long class is, right? Sorry, go ahead. Right, right. But I mean, without like push hands play and stuff like that, but definitely half hour, you know, sometimes up to an hour and a half, but then there's a point at which it depends on what you call practice. So like before I get out of bed, I'm making sure I can breathe through my body. You know, it's like, Oh, how does it feel? Can I get to my fingertips? Can I get to my toes? All that kind of stuff. Is that practice? I don't know. I <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. I would say yes. <laughs> and then that would change that number quite a bit because there's a lot of that kind of a stuff. Um, I'd love to say I'm doing it 24 seven. Uh, but the reality is, you know, it's like I, I'm doing it several times during the day, but I'm not necessarily living it as much as I want in every moment. But, but it's headed, I can tell that it's headed that way based on doing yeah. something like that and some marrow feeling. Well, and marrow I will say, kind of I think it changes too. Like I'm probably running more stuff at rest now than I was two years ago trying, yep. you know? So there is that kind of aspect, but like mentally paying a little more attention, it's a few times a day, plus that half hour of practice to hour and a half or whatever. Sure, cool. Art? Um, well, as far as the- uh... let, me add to, let me add real quick to this too. If there's anything specific that you practice, you go like, like when I said form that you're doing every day, then that's kind of what I would, you know, that you're having to take time out and go, I'm doing this thing. Um, then that may be something that you're saying, well, I do this, this thing every day. And I'm saying, and I'm, I'm saying this now because I know there's a couple different Qigong you kind of do every day that tie into what we're talking about. Sorry, go ahead. Um, okay. Well, since you, you brought that up, I'll say, um, and I was going to start with what would be called actual practice where I'm in a location and I'm doing forms or exercises or meditation. And um, I have a set of five, um, I've just known them as internal exercises. I, I've seen them from some other people and, and they are actually part of, I think a, a 12 exercise set that are very simple um, for um, stretching the meridians, the heart, lung, liver, kidneys and stomach. Um, again, I, I do them. Those are some of the first exercises I learned when I first learned Kung Fu. And I do not every day, but most days, the uh, Yi Jin Jing, um, also known as uh, the Buddhist Muscle Change or Muscle Change Classic. 
that is a set of 12 exercises, uh, six of which are static postures and six are actual um, postures in motion um, that can be repeated 12 to 36 times or, or fewer, you know, beginning. Um, so again, the, I do those two um, pretty much every day. Um, and I um, do some standing meditation of maybe just a few minutes and on, on a good day, uh, maybe half an hour or so, but I don't claim that by any means every day. Um, and then just various other um, qi gongs um, along with um, and then I'll, well, after that, I'll just do some stretching to either stretching, stretching, or sort of loosening, um, relaxing, loosening the joints, um, whether actually bending them um, and working with them um, individually or just sort of doing a wave-like motion and trying to increase the flexibility. I with relaxation and loosening the joints. And, and then after that, um, I do some, um, getting a at least a little bit of form work to maintain ability with that. Um, usually Tai Chi and again on a good day, some other external styles. Now you've been working a lot on uh, Zonging have you been doing that where you do it throughout the day at different odd and times throughout the day where you just do it for a minute and go on and come back and do it for a minute, that kind of thing? Or yes, well, well, yes. And that, again, is I was going to bring up as the uh, other part of my sort of 24-7 or ongoing daily practice, um, as Greg mentioned, starting out um, doing whole body breathing. And, and I'll start out also um, in, the, in the morning with... Uh, the marrow washing and relaxation, whole body breathing. Um, and, and then I, I, I don't really count that exactly as time spent pra in practice, but I realize it is does have a lot of beneficial effects. Throughout the day, the 24 seven idea. Yep. Right, yes. And then um, again, as far as the Zhang, Zhang Ding and, well, Zhang Ding um, and the uh, the, the alignment structure connection, I do that throughout the day, just maybe stop for a second, say, okay, do this, um, hold it for a little bit. And, and actually I try to go through the process a few times along with um, when I move, trying to move the whole body, for example, in, in reaching for something, I'll try to keep the, my body connected and move as, as a unit to go with um, shifting, shifting, turning the waist, um, and then using actual separate arm motion as little as possible so I can keep connected. Um, and then I, I feel that that helps me throughout the day sort of keeping um, the internal principles going and helping. Cool. So that's pretty much what I do. Thank you. Yeah, go. Yep, Sheila. So I'm, I'm uh, actually kind of comforted by what you guys have said so far. Um, I could say that what I do is a little bit similar. I have about two hours every morning where I go through um, sort of a self care routine. And a lot of that is Qigong and Tai Chi meditation. And then there's some other things that I pepper in as well. Um, as far as actually like setting aside a dedicated time to practice, I would consider that to be form work. It's at least half an hour. Um, obviously, if I have a class that is extended. Um, and so uh, I guess the idea of the 24-7, um, I feel like I'm not making it while I'm asleep. <laughs> I'm not getting the full 24 because usually it's so funny during the day. I'm actually more relaxed than in the, than during the night. And when I wake up in the morning, I have to work out all kinds of weird tension. And so I don't know what's going on with that, but 
I hope that I'll make uh, 24 <laughs> someday. Um, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I'd be looking at on the bedding situation is sometimes uh, people need extra blankets and pillows and that kind of a thing. And, and whether you're on them or you got them like tucked in between body parts and stuff. Uh -huh. And the other one is uh, that I found that people, this idea that people need really very different um, surface tension, you know, whether it be really, really soft or really, really hard, it really is something that most people, what they're, what they do best with is different than everybody else. And so you've got to make sure that if like you're sleeping on something too soft for you and it's causing issues, then you need something harder. And the same thing, if you're sleeping on something too hard and that's causing issues, go to soft, you know, and really find the one that's right for you. And it's worth the extra, uh, you know, a lot of people, when it comes to buying a bed, when you start talking about a thousand, two thousand dollars and that kind of thing for a good quality bed, they don't want to spend it. But if you spend eight hours, you know, a third of a day, every day, eight hours sleeping, it's worth the investment if, as long as, you know, as long as you can afford it, because I mean, you're spending so much time there and how you feel on the ongoing and your ability to do like what you're talking about. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a truly an investment in yourself. That is, um, but there's a lot of other stuff I would probably forego before I would not have good bedding given, you know, you get what I'm saying. Well, and the trick, the trick with that then also is um, <laughs> testing it out before you make that investment, right? <laughs> Which uh, one should I go for the soft one or the, or the firm uh, one, you know? So. Or, get, or get one of those where they're going to let you use that bed for a day to 30 days. And at any time in that 30 days, you can swap it and that they've got the other kind of choices. So that, and that they know, Hey, I'm having trouble right up front. Make sure that you've got a person that you know, you're going to deal with that person. And right. hey, I'm trouble sleeping. I don't know which one it is. And I may go through three beds before I have the right one. And that they're like completely, really, truly good with that. And make sure what you've you got signed with them in writing is saying directly that they're going to be good with that. And just really, like I said, it's worth the effort that you're putting into it for what you're going to get back out of it. Yeah, that's that's a good thing to look into. And then I guess um, outside of that, my, my efforts towards 24-7 uh, practice are just being mindful in everything that I do. And even though, you know, maybe that's not directly from Tai Chi, but I feel like it's really closely related. And if I'm being very mindful, it's putting me into a mental state that's similar to um, when I'm doing a practice yeah, officially. No, so. It is part of it. It absolutely yes. is part of it. So, yes. Uh, okay. Sheila, oh, oh, Phil. there are beds that you can adjust the, the tension. Yeah, and, from zero and, to 100 and all that. I don't know how well they work. I didn't want to, I've not done one of those, so I didn't want to talk about it because I can't, I couldn't tell you. If you ask me any questions, I'll be like, I don't know, but he may know more about it. I, I have no experience other than what, than what I see on TV ads, but with them, they actually have, you can, you can, you can adjust the tension on your side and your spouse can adjust the tension on his side. And that can I adjust the tension on your side? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different tension. <laughs> but anyway, but that's one of the big selling points is, is the idea that a lot of times different spouses have different needs as far as sure. the time. So. Yeah, everybody's different. So it's, it really is normally that what you need and what your spouse needs. Like, like my wife and I, for just directly, I need it really soft and she needs it. She almost needs it like floor quality hard um, in order for us to each get a good night's sleep and feel good when we get up. I mean, it really is drastically different like that. So, yeah. Okay, Harry. Uh, so the um, specific things that I work on change all the time. And it usually comes from whatever assignment or unofficial assignment I get from you, like the latest thing that I've learned. And I want to have a, a certain level of proficiency with it and try to own it as best I can. So I find generally when I get something new, 
It could be as short as a month, sometimes as long as three months where that's my thing. And I'm working on that constantly until I see you next. Now the pandemic has kind of changed that um, a little bit, not, not a lot. Uh, like, so right now, uh, straw breathing is one of the things that I'm constantly working on because uh, I saw what a huge difference that made in the Zoom workshop that we had. So yes, thank you. Um, as far as the uh, 24-7 part, um, well, uh, rewind, I, I have, I actually have about seven hours worth of classes per week that I'm teaching now. And so that keeps me going in whatever I'm teaching and working on and practicing as well. Um, so I really love that part of it. Um, when I'm in the city, amongst all the chaos, which to a degree is back now, um, it's not vacant in the city as it was earlier in the pandemic, where it's yeah. like an eerie ghost town. Now there's a lot of people around. And when I'm occasionally in for whatever reason, um, I like that I can now mostly walk around without even trying amongst all of that. And the level of relaxation is such that I have that tingling and that buzz in the hands. Yeah. Um, and so there's that. Um, and then the other part, um, when I get behind the wheel of the car, I mean, let's face it, I'm in New Jersey. I'm having to work really hard and not flip people off all the time. <laughs> so there's my... That's one of these no, 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 don't do it. No. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, that's uh, that's how I've got it going on. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Uh, Daniel, I wanted to give you a chance to weigh in there. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it because I got to go to work. Um well, yeah, I uh, I would agree with everybody. I mean, for me, Tai Chi, Kung Fu is not a hobby, but a way of life. And so, you know, it's just continually working on stuff. And if I've got more time, then it just means more practice. Um, but if you want to talk about clears internal push hands, which for me is the fastest way to get those internal skills, uh, I'm pretty fortunate that I get a lot of that. Our students, our school is filled with... Mm -hmm. um, people from the warm market. So most of the people that are in the school, like I have two of my bosses trained with us and my father-in-law and my wife, people from my church, people from my job. And so we're continually just meeting. I mean, we have a lot of classes too, like Harry said, but um, like tonight after work, there's a group of us that'll push because we're all at work and we'll all be done and we just all want to push. And so, um, yeah, we get a lot of that, which is awesome. So. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Jim, I wanted to give you a chance to weigh in as well. I know you might have to go off on a call or something. So, yeah, my uh, my standard answer to this is always not enough. <laughs> you know, I'd I, <laughs> I'd like to like to be able to practice more. Um, but you know, as as Harry brought up, you know, we have the classes, and and that gives me you know a couple hours a week, and then uh, it I find that beneficial both as a student and as a, an instructor, because when you have to break things down and explain them to other people, you, you tend to get a little bit more out of what you're studying. Yep. So I highly recommend that, even if it's just a, a small group that you can put together uh, to try to spread out and you know extend <laughs> the knowledge. It makes you think through the material in a different way. And so because of that, yeah. you pick up things and then you're like, and it starts to assimilate things in a way that, you know, from more than one perspective that then adds to that whole. So absolutely. Yes. And I, and I try to incorporate that, you know, basic principles of the Qigong 24 seven. And I find myself now, you know, during any downtime or, or at, at any time where, I find a little bit of peace and solitude, whether it be in the car or standing out and, you know, just reaching, trying to, to root or trying to reach the, you know, roots of the trees or try to expand and float and add some of these different principles. It's something that you can do when it's not very obvious. People aren't staring at you. And it, it does it does work to to try to incorporate some of the training into the little gap times that you have. But I can't wait until I can be retired like art and, and make it uh, my whole day. <laughs> it's uh, I'm envious of your art. <laughs> All right. He says you'll get there. I do what I can. Thanks. That's it. That's <laughs> great. That's great. 
And now, a word from our sponsor. For those of you who are interested in internal power and want a reliable place to start, and for anyone who wants to experience internal power for themselves, go to internalpowerguide.com. I built a crash course in hands-on internal power. The Practical Guide to Internal Power is a work at your own pace online program. It is the course I use to get students from zero to 60 as quickly as possible, and it is totally free. So sign up at internalpowerguide.com now and get started right away. That's internalpowerguide.com. Phil? So my practice is probably closest to gyms and it's, it's not enough. Uh, and I do, it does change from time to time. So I'm, I'm good about focusing on a new challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, and so mindfulness is a, is really a, is a big part of what I'm trying to do in my life. Um, I was working on the Tai Chi for arthritis. So I'm trying to remember to try to keep on the electric when I just walk around. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I had a extended talk with Harry, which I really appreciated. And I'm working on trying to see energy more. So, so those are my current projects. Uh, and it's, it's not as consistent or as systematic as other people, but it's, that's kind of how my brain works. So sure. Anyway. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Ty. I usually put in about four hours a day. I'm lucky in that I'm retired and uh, it actually keeps me very healthy physically and mentally. Um, a lot of the things that other people have talked about are things that I do. Um, something that I do want to clarify, um, not only for myself, but anybody watching this, but you keep referring to the DVD as Clear's 24 hour Qigong. 24 seven. 24 seven Qigong. I have one here in front of me. It just says clears Qigong, but then the subtext is daily Nigong practice and 24 seven training. Is that a different DVD or is it the no, same? That is, that uh, is the one he's talking about. And that is an excellent video. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, it is an excellent video. I do have it. I just wanted to clarify that it was the video that you were talking about. There is and, stuff on there about mindfulness too, actually. Yes. Yeah, I started off with that in the beginning. Go ahead. Exactly. And so um, it just depends on what, you know, specific thing that I have going on. Like Harry was talking about earlier, I try to find something to focus in on and make sure that's something I do every day. And I also make sure that I do the um, bone marrow breathing every day. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. And then do you get do you get to do, I can't wait to say this, do you get to do some push hands with thunder? <laughs> no, <laughs> I've been, I have. A picture with him and, and <laughs> he's just strong. How much does thunder weigh now about? He's 140 now. Yeah, about 140 feels like about 250. <laughs> so go ahead. Carson, no, that has been dis discouraged because thunder thinks everybody wants to play push hands. And so when you have a neighbor seeing a 140 pound dog running at him, they think he's going to bite him. I have to always explain he's aggressive. He's aggressively friendly. <laughs> he wants to play. Yep. Yep. Cool. It's so funny that you mentioned that I have six dogs at my house and two of them are Rottweilers. Oh, okay. I have two fairly large, uh, you know, re rescue dogs. And then there's this very agile, um, well, I think she's been on my lap at a couple of the calls, Australian blue healer. And uh, it's really interesting because each one of them has a different personality for, for tussle time. I don't know if you can call it push because they don't really, I mean, a couple of them have pretty good root, but they don't really <laughs> know like how to play. So, but we kind of tussle and I brush them off and we go here and there. And, and definitely dogs are awesome for for unexpected moves and, you know, spontaneous sort of, you don't know where they're coming from. Do any of your dogs, and I think Thunder does it from when we visited you there, where they lean, like my big Anatolian, which is about 140 pound dog, about the size of a small horse, they lean on you. Mm -hmm. And you're standing there, it's like, I'm being, hey. <laughs> 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 and, 
Yes. The the other thing I find interesting about him and my cat, it's like when it's time for me to meditate, it's time for them to meditate. Usually there's one on each side of me as I'm doing uh, meditation. Yep, group energy. Yes. Cool. Um, Chris? Thank you, Sifo. Yeah, I, I, I'm in the ballpark with everyone. You know, I, I think I'm sort of cyclical with my training right now. Um, what I want to do and what I actually do aren't always the same. Uh, there's a lot of demands right now in, in life that uh, I have to address and I have to spend time with them. Uh, so I have a plan that I'm going to get up every morning and train. And uh, a lot of times I can. And inside my plan for training, I, I try to plan what I'm going to train. I, I want to work on, like Harry is saying, a specific uh, area of my training. And I'll carry that out for a while on the days that I can. Um, and then same with Jim and the others throughout the day, I'm trying to fit in um, just a little micro training. So a little something that maybe, maybe I'll stand in a, in a posture, I'll uh, work on, on how the energy drops, or maybe I'll go just through the, the form and uh, apply a, a certain energy. I like doing uh, the electric magnetic pulsing. I, that, that feels good. Um, so I'm not as, as steadfast every single day on a training plan, but my mind is there and I really try to hold on to the be here now because that works a lot for me at work. Yeah, if you're you know? using that, that's part of that 24 seven training yeah. to, be able to do that because it keeps your mind in a certain state where that has to ties into what this is. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that helps a lot. That's, that helps me a lot with work. I do sometimes try and think that I can be here now in more than one place. And I, and I try to actively do that. I try to like say, can I keep track of these two or three things without having to like spin around, think of this, this, and this, and this, this, and this. I'm like, can I maintain it? And well, there's a couple of days where it feels like I'm able to do that, but it's, it's better just to stick to one thing. <laughs> but, I, don't, uh, I don't know if I recommend doing it, but what I have watched Carly do on um, more than one occasion, and she seems to be able to do it in a way that I don't think I can do. She'll have a friend on the phone, where it's a, but it's a video call. She's playing a game, and there's a TV show. And if you ask her about any of the three, she can tell you what's going on with them. Yes. On a running basis, there, you know, like like she's not yeah. losing track of any of it. I, I've seen that too, and that's why I believe that I should be able to do it. You know, if it can be done, why can't I do it? So it really comes down to, I think. Um, where my mental state is and what's going on and um, my emotional state as well. It seems that mm -hmm. the more calm I am at it in my emotions, the easier it is for my mind to hold on to more information. So I have to make sure that I'm really cognizant of what's going on. And I can feel myself sometimes in training or, or meditating where there's that thing that, that just wants to keep pulling me out. Yep. So That's sometimes right. I sometimes I let it and I say, okay, I'm done. And other times I, I can focus where I want to focus. I've felt Carly when she's doing this and she is super, super placid when she's mm. doing it. It's not like she's frenetic and trying to keep up with it all. She's yeah. normally fairly calm and quiet and very reserved anyways. And it's just another level of, of Pacific placid depth when she's doing that. That's very smooth, very calm, very... Um, uh the active part of it's so so calm and quiet that it almost feels like you have to really feel for it it's not like it's obvious right away that's great it's, it's like you think she's not doing any of it yeah. uh for lack of a better way to say it that's actually one of the mantras that i that I'm, I'm using now is uh go placidly uh, among the noise because i'm surrounded by everything and yeah. i have I have a reminder on my phone that comes up a couple times a day and I'll cycle through and I'll have another mantra at another time. But that's the one that I'm, I'm trying to work with now because lately there has been so much noise. Sure. A lot of turmoil. Yeah. All that. Sure. Yeah. And busyness. And yeah. yeah. All cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. When you, get, you. when you get to come here again next. Um, yeah. I'm sure you'll get to see Carly and you'll see some of what I'm talking about. I know some of you have had that experience already. Because, yeah. And, and some of the mind skill stuff that she picks <laughs> up on a little more quickly and, and is very able with compared to the average person doing it 
Um, it involves that where a lot of times you're like, like Harry, he can relate this sitting there and being like, what is that? And then at some point realizing it was her from across the room, like projecting at him, but she's doing it. So with this calm thing, I'll let him tell you from there because he can explain it better than me. Well, exactly that. And also doing it uh, through people like around, (laughs) (laughs) not just the straight shot. So yeah, she's got a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Absolutely. <laughs> Can't wait to see her again. Well, what I'm talking about there is that part of the reason that she's hard to pick up on at first is because even if it's line of sight, it's not like she's actively in there doing that. It's got that. Oh, right. It's got that super placid thing where you're like, wait a minute. You know, and then it's soft, but it's there. Yes. It's soft, but it's there. That's what I'm getting at. And that softness that it really is the Tai Chi thing of doing it that way. And people assume that soft doesn't mean strong. Right, that soft means means weak or collapse somehow, and that's it's not that kind of soft. It's really soft, but it's really strong at the same time. That is what Tai Chi is, in a certain way, really getting at. And so it's yeah, and the same thing with that placidity. A lot of people they would just be shutting things off to get there, and it's not that it's shut off. It's that it's really that that placid, subdued, calming, and subdued being even the wrong word because it indicates towards a shutting off idea. So it's it's that just super internally, externally quiet above well, yourself, you know, that kind of thing. And I would think being a kid is an advantage to her because she doesn't have decades of crap in the background making noise in her oh, head. Oh, come on now. She grew up with Chase in the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, still. <laughs> and her mom and dad. Well, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. Squabble days. Anyways. Um... Jeremy? Um, yeah, so um, <clears throat> really on my daily practices, it's kind of the, the easy, low-hanging fruit stuff. It's, uh, it's uh, moving the energy through my body, making sure I can, I can feel, the, feel everything kind of going on and just kind of moving things through. Uh, <clears throat> kind of doing a little, you know, stretchy stuff to make sure things stay loosened up and not get locked in somehow from whatever daily thing or overnight, you know, sleep thing that kind of got locked in there. Um, <clears throat> just being in the moment and very mindful throughout the day and then noticing, noticing your body state at different stages through the day. Like, ah, oh, I got to quit holding that in my shoulders or man, I really just need to relax. I really need to, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting stressed. I kind of just need to some, my mind and just relax right uh but you know if i'm wanting to do some more intensive stuff uh you know 15 minutes or 30 minutes in in a in a day is 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 gonna bust it out for me and works pretty well for me um but you know if i'm if i'm cramming for a test so to speak uh you know during the normal curriculum of the xing yi test you know, I wrote this list down <clears throat> and I'm going through this list every day and it's, you know, it's a couple hours. Uh, and, you know, that's not a normal thing, but uh, the easy, low hanging fruit things are, are, are my normal 24 seven top, top practice. Two things I'll talk about briefly off of that. Was there something more? Or... No, no, it's good. Uh, yeah, it's it. One of them was one of the first ones that I did that was a 24 seven thing was that I carried a lot of tension in both in my belly when I was driving and then the shoulders. And it was literally get behind the wheel of the car. Okay. Release that drive down the road for a minute, feel it again. Another minute, feel it again. Traffic would come up, feel it again. And just continually while driving, yeah. doing that again and again and again and again don't let the tension take over my body and freeze up both my body and my mind and just continually relax continually relax continue you know and doing that while keeping my structure and posture because i am driving so it's not like they can collapse right which would and so it also helped with that idea of keeping proper shape you know structure alignment and yet being really relaxed so that i wasn't getting stressed because it because when i first started driving i was terrified of it and it was taking a lot of energy out of me to the emotional uh, and the tension. I'd get it done driving the car and be like, man, I'm tired. And so it was, how do I do this? And, and, you know, really not have that and actually build energy while I'm driving. And so then that became a practice that I was just doing and doing and doing and still do that then became this, you know, you're doing it all the time. 
Uh, and so there was that one. And then there was something else that you said there too that I wanted to weigh in on. What was it? Oh, the, yeah. All right. So was there anything about that part about the 24 seven part of that? And I'll, and I'll pick that first if there is anything. Okay. So then the other one was when I'm doing a list for that, and I've got a list that I normally put down that I work on. Um, I will go through that list and I'll make sure that I'm really doing it. And then I start looking how fast can I fully turn that on and have it really, really, really happening. And then go to the next one and go to the next one. So I'll take a list like that, start off. Maybe it takes me two hours to really go through and work that stuff. I don't feel like I'm done with it until I can go through that list. Let's say it's 15 items and hit those 15 items in like 15 minutes or less where it's like, bam, bam, bam. And they're full tilt and they're full on and they're, they're through and through. And that the instant that I start to do it, it's really got everything going on that I've taken out the amount of time it took me to warm up to get that thing going on. And that also there's not any more um, sticking points or difficulties or I'm not doing it or that was a rough part of that and that kind of thing. But it's making it so that I own that material. And then it also makes it a lot easier when I'm standing somewhere walking, whatever I'm doing, I can turn on that energy or do that thing. It just becomes part of what I'm doing right now and trying to basically accelerate that and not doing it where I'm doing like one second of the thing so that if I ever had to do it for a minute I'm like oh man I'm only doing a second of that a day I can't do that but where it is something I can turn on very fast have on enough to go I'm really yeah I've really got that going and can do that next and, and it's you know and that if I wanted to go through it doing it for a few seconds 10 seconds 15 seconds 20 seconds and I go through that same 15 item list and get through it in a, in a minute, two minutes and do the whole thing. So if I had a day where I'm just like, I can't really practice right today, I'll hit the list. If I've worked the list like that and normally I get there with it, um, I'll do it where it's that, where I at least touched it today um, as opposed to not. Cool. And then last but not least, I think that um, Matt, are you the only person I've got that I haven't asked this of yet? that we haven't talked to or talk way in on this yet. I think so. Yes. So Matt, I do not know the answer to that question, but I have not said anything about it yet. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, so uh, yeah. So, I mean, I love a lot of the answers that I've heard and I think Jeremy and Sifu, you both kind of touched on um, an element of it that uh, is a little bit more where I'm kind of coming from in terms of 24 seven is that ideally I'm trying to make it all 24 seven, you know, ultimately I really want it to be, I want to own it so much that it's on autopilot that like all of the skills are just kind of going on. And Greg, you sort of said it um, like there's more going on in the background now than there was when I was like really thinking about it and focusing on it, you know, two, three years ago. Um, and, and I want to keep that continuing. I always want to make that the case and I always want to make that more. And so a lot of my, a lot of my focused, training sessions where I'm putting dedicated time into something. That's what I'm trying to do with it is I'm trying to make it more routine. I'm trying to own it better. I'm trying to like make it more of a habit. Um, and so then I do those things like, uh, you know, what Sifu and Jeremy were talking about where I'm checking in throughout the day and I look for opportunities to do that, whether it be while I'm driving um, and, you know, looking for errors that I make that are kind of classic errors that I make while I'm driving, or if I'm standing in line at a bank or in a grocery store or something, which then becomes automatically if I'm standing anywhere. And so it just becomes my standing practice. And then, you know, and I find these opportunities to check in. And at first I'm checking in about things that I'm working on. And so I'm having to make corrections almost every time I check in, but after enough of that and enough sessions of that and enough practice with it, there's fewer and fewer and fewer corrections. And, and I'm finding more and more when I'm checking in that I'm actually already doing mostly proper things most of the time and that the corrections are rarer and rarer and rarer. And that until one day I do have to make a correction and it's almost weird. It's like, ooh, why am I, why am I standing like that? My knees are locked. Ugh, I never do that. And, uh, you know, and, or whatever, whatever it happens to be, but, um, that's kind of the journey and that's kind of the process of it. Um, and so, and they, and then they feed each other too, is the other thing that when you're really doing that 24 seven practice and when you're really mindful of it in that way, 
you'll start to find things that you need to put extra time and work into like, Ooh, I never noticed my hip was kind of locked up over there. I better figure out how to, you know, stretch that out more. And so then you start to figure out, you know, what, what is wrong and what is off and why doesn't that move right? And, and then you, you start to figure out the right kind of ways to open things up. And then that becomes a part of the 24 seven practice. And it just, it all sort of keeps getting better and more. And it's this never ending process of refinement and discovery. Um, but there's benefits like concrete benefits every single step of the way. And so that's, um, that's, that's been my experience of it. And that's kind of my attitude towards all of the training and the push hands and the form work and all of it. They're all these vehicles to help give, give you that kind of better feedback and that better, um, you know, skill and that better tangible, uh, you know, demonstrable internal power that you then keep kind of on throughout the day, but you know, it's real, you know, it's really going on because you can feel it because it's the difference between, well, when I was standing like this or when I was doing, when I had the, you know, the electric on this way, um, you know, it was really kicking them off like that. I need to keep that on more this way, or I need to have my, you know, structure better this way or whatever it is that you're working on. You have that feedback that real world, like, yes, it really is on and it really does work kind of going on for you so that when you incorporate it, it's real and and it's, and you're really building skill 24 seven, literally. (laughs) Um, And, and, you know, and getting better, better and better and better just automatically, just, just with like what's going on in the background. Um, And so then when what you are working on, it becomes that much more powerful and it's all, it all just kind of escalates. Cool. Excellent. Um, was there anything else on this topic that anybody wanted to add in on to or something that has occurred to you during us talking about it um, that you wanted to add at all? Okay, so I wanted to make sure I'd given you guys a chance to weigh in and we'll do our uh, a word from our sponsor, uh, Clear Tai Chi. And if you're if you've listened to some of this and been like that sounds like some pretty neat stuff. I'd like to be able to do that better more all that, then you'll want the, the clear Tai Chi 24 seven Qigong, which you can find at the, the, uh, the course is called uh, clear Qigong and it is a uh, uh, daily Qigong and 24 seven practice. And that is uh, available at um, uh, actually at clear Qigong.com. Um, you can just go to clear Qigong.com and go straight to it, or you can check out, you can find it also at clear martial arts.com and check out other material that we have there, including the free practical guide to internal power and the level one Tai Chi and the other things that we've talked about on the podcast recently. Um, those are all available at, uh, clear martial arts.com. Cool. Um, if, after we get done with the call, if anybody would have anything else they want to talk about, feel free to stay on or, or like that. And then uh, thank you guys. Great talking to you all today. Looking forward to seeing a, a number of you here in a week and a half, hopefully. Um, be safe out there and well and more next time. And thank you. Thank you, Seafood. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. And now a word from our sponsor. What is internal power? Most people only understand external exerting power, which is another way of saying tense muscle strength. Bigger, more tense muscles equal more power. That's external power. Internal power comes from pretty much anything except tensing your muscles. There are many sources of internal power and tapping into them is more of a mind skill than anything else. This is where the phrase mind over matter comes from. My name is Richard Clear, and internal power is what I do. Students come to me for the mind over muscle secrets of internal power that are hard to find anywhere else. Over the past 40 years, I figured out how to get students on the fast track to effortless power. I created a -a one-of-a-kind online program that is getting such amazing results for my students that I put a money-back guarantee on it. Find out more at internalpowerkeys.com. That's internalpowerkeys.com. Thank you.